fixed, Iowa. Take care about nature. Our bushcraft hut now has a coat with watery thatch. But we still have to finish the most important part of the roof, the ridge. And for that we choose this quite particular material. The roof's ridge is more vulnerable to the elements than the rest of the roof. Often a more flexible material such as straw that easily folds over the ridge is used to protect the ridge and upper thatching spars. In our case with sourcing local natural materials on suggestion of the local thatch master lady we chose to make a ridge of heather. It might look a bit funky but I hope it will give a rustic forest look to the shed. Let's see. The reed is folded over the ridge to the other side, also protecting the row of upper scallops and liggers that hold the reeds in place. In the first part of this thatching project, we started with laying the ridge roll. That roll is laying underneath here and is now very important, forming a basis for the scallops to tightly grip into. And so the rich thatch can be heavily compacted and stays in place.
Today, the kind of dinner you're not used from me. Self-butchered venison from the lands around our bushcraft camp. In principle, I eat plant-based, as meat and dairy is the biggest driver of worldwide deforestation, which doesn't line up with my bushcraft philosophy and aims of rewilding and reforestation. But this venison, in contrary with meat from the supermarket, might be one of the most sustainable things you could possibly eat. High deer pressure on native tree saplings often restricts natural forest regeneration, favoring the non-native needle species, which aren't highly ranked on the deer's diet. A big problem in Ireland and other parts of Europe, with natural predators, in particular the wolf, unfortunately being absent. More and more heather dissolved into the ridge. I needed to gather some more. This tool is called a sickle. It was used as an agricultural hand tool to harvest grain crops and such. It works great for cutting heather, a lot better than a kukri or hand saw for example. The way the header is compressed when laid on the roof, you'd be surprised how many is needed. Over 20 of such bundles dissolved into the ridge.
the roundhouse will be the real deal. And this was the practice. But for the roundhouse it will be done different and it's also a very different shape of course. Yeah, that's very exciting. We'll uh, do it also the way it will last a lot longer than the shed I hope. I mean we use bad quality reed on, on this. So we'll see how long it lasts. <laughs> it just took so much more time than I, I expected. It took a week, seven days of messing and filming. But satisfying, very satisfying. And especially this header, this header ridge, maybe we went over the top with it. Because man, it took more time than actually putting the reed over the wall thing, touching the wall thing. Like, yeah, we'll see how it holds up and uh, we'll see you on the next one when we test the waterproofness of the shed. Cheers! Also, check out the other parts of this build constructing the shed with just X saw and knife and touching it with reed. Subscribe for the roundhouse build and for our Irish viewers, we have a bushcraft workshop weekend planned at the roundhouse camp in May. Among many other workshops, such as bow making with skilled tutors, info in the description.